Welcome to Electro Online. Here's a very classic type problem where we're dealing with rotational kinetic energy. We have a rotating disc that's located in place and we have an object hanging from it like this. We're allowing the object to fall down. Of course, that will cause the disc then, which has the string wrapped around the disc, uh, will of course cause the disc to accelerate as well in an angular fashion. It'll have angular acceleration. The question is, if the object started from a height of 3 meters, what will be its final velocity when it reaches the bottom? Of course, it will lose, it will lose potential energy, it will gain kinetic energy, and then this disk here will gain rotational kinetic energy. We use the equation that energy initial of the whole system equals energy final. And the initial energy is wrapped up in the potential energy of the disk, so we can say that the potential energy initial I should not say that this, but the mass here that has a height of 3 meters will have to be equal to the kinetic energy of the mass, that will be the translational kinetic energy, final, plus the rotational kinetic energy, final, of the disk. So the translational energy will be locked in the object that's coming down this way, and the rotational kinetic energy will be locked up in the disk as it's rotating, because it cannot go anywhere, it's stuck right there in place. The potential energy would be mgh, and that will equal the translational kinetic energy, which is equal to one half mv final squared plus the kinetic energy rotational. And let me rewrite this here. That's two. That would be one half i omega squared. And of course, that's, a, that's the omega final squared, and that is the trans, the rotational kinetic energy of the disk itself. Plugging in what these are equal to, because it's a solid disk and we have the moment of inertia right there, so we get mgh is equal to one half mv final squared plus one half times the moment of inertia, which is one half mr squared. I use a capital letter m to denote the mass of the disk, a small letter m to denote the mass of the mass of the the object here. And then we multiply times omega final, which can be written as V over R. We make that V final, and of course we have to square that. Remember that V is equal to R times omega, therefore omega is equal to V divided by R, and that's where that comes from. Simplifying that a little bit more, we get MGH is equal to one half MV final squared plus one half times a half, that would be one quarter m, and the r's will cancel out here, v final square. We cannot combine these two terms because they have different masses. This is the mass of the object, and this is the mass of the disk, so they cannot be combined. Because of that, we have to factor out v final squared. We get mgh is equal to the quantity one half m plus one quarter capital M, times v final squared. Solving that for v final squared, we get v final squared is equal to the left side mgh divided by one half times the mask of the object plus one quarter times the mask of the disk. Now we take the square root of both sides. v final is equal to the square root of mgh divided by one half times the mask of the object plus one quarter times the mass of the disk. Now we plug in the numbers and see what we get. The square root of, that would be 2 kilograms times 9.8, starting from a height of 3 meters, divided by 1 half times 2, plus 1 quarter times, and that would be 4. Hmm, it's almost like I picked the numbers, isn't it? All right, with a calculator, let's see what we get. 2 times 3, times 9.8, divide by 2 equals, and then we take the square root of that, and we get 5.42 meters per second. 5.42 meters per second. So notice that when we deal with an object that is attached to something that can only rotate, we have to take into account that there's both translational kinetic energy gained by this object and rotational kinetic energy gained by the rotating disk. And that's how it's done.